Hello, I'm Ryan F9 and these are the coolest helmet graphics I've ever seen. First up, the LS2 FF324 Metro Firefly. Wow, I mean, what's the big deal here? Maybe it's a little bit sharper than most modular helmets. Yeah, maybe the blacked out chin vents give a whiff of the Stormtrooper, but now for this to head up our list, there must be something else going on here. Lights out. So the Firefly glows in the dark, perhaps we should have known. And it's not just random shiny stripes, it's actually branded in glimmering green. The night reveals LS2, your manufacturer. Metro, your model, and Firefly, your crystal colorway. Even the lightweight kinetic polymer alloy shell shines in the darkness, KPA. The number one question I hear about the Firefly, does it really glow? And the answer is yes. This isn't the phosphorescent crap you got in your third grade Happy Meal. It is legit high-vis stuff. It's even raised off the surface a little bit, which gives the graphic a 3D quality. You can feel it even when you can't see it. This is one of my favorite colorways on the market, and lucky me, it happens to adorn one of my favorite modulars. I've done a proper review of the FF324 Metro in another video, so for now, well, let's just say that it's far too light and it opens much too slick for a $250 bucket. The only catch is that these chin bar vents are bullshit. They only close with these separate panel covers, except for the panels break if you take them on and off too frequently. It's useless. Now, I like graphics that make sense on a motorcycle, like the Firefly with its nighttime visibility, or this, Icon's Armada first responder helmet. I know what you're thinking. Most Icon graphics are idiotic combinations of aliens, fire, and boobs, but the first responder is different. Meet Saint Michael, the archangel badass who fought the devil. Notice his shield casually strewn aside. This is a warrior of attack, not defense. He charges forward in the face, the face of great danger, earning his place as the patron saint of first responders. See, that means something to a motorcyclist. If I go down, my life could be in the hands of a paramedic, a firefighter, or a cop. Might as well show some respect by visualizing their main man. As for the helmet itself, we have Icon's middleweight sport bucket here. It's not as svelte as the airframe, and it's not as pudgy as the Alliance either. The Armada isn't especially light, 1,620 grams to this size medium, but it is slim. If I put it next, to a thousand dollar Arai Corsair X, you could barely say which was bigger. Of course, Arai made a tight helmet with science, whereas Icon made a tight helmet by making a tight helmet. Even for a long oval head shape, the Armada is real squeeze to put on. But that means it's reasonably quiet, making all but an airtight seal with my pinched head. And the Armada is comfy too, thanks to its hydrodry liner, which is a genius fabric that Icon doesn't get enough credit for. Cons to this helmet include the lack of a Snell sticker, which some track day officials might bitch about. Next, the IS-17 Ironman. HJC is the king of cross-branding. They've done oodles of helmets with Marvel. They're also coming out with a slew of Star Wars buckets. You can get Spider-Man, Venom, Kylo Ren, Boba Fett. There are more geeky graphics than there are geeky motorcyclists. I chose the Iron Man because I love graphics that make sense, remember? Well, Iron Man epitomizes the synergy between man and machine. In a fictitious world, Iron Man is the pinnacle of what is possible at the crossroads of flesh and metal. Here in the real world, people say the same thing about motorcycles. The synergy of man and machine. Also, it's cool that HJC brought the face shield into the graphic by giving it an orange tint. As it happens, yellowish visors tend to be the most versatile between high and low light. You couldn't really pick a better color for distinguishing road hazards. But how is the IS-17 as a helmet? Pretty good. 1,520 grams for this size medium is shockingly light for a budget polycarb, especially considering that I get a drop-down sunshield. I do hate the mechanism on this, though. As soon as the spring in here gets tired, the visor fails to retract fully. The IS-17 is comfortable, provided you have a neutral head shape and sit more or less upright on the motorcycle. I like that its visor clips in the center because lefties are people too. My main complaint has to do with wind. I hear and feel a lot of it. Next is the Bell Qualifier DLX Isle of Man helmet. I'm a big fan of the TT. It's a miracle that races like that are still legal. So this tribute graphic earned a spot on my list. The centerpiece is this massive Isle of Man text wrapping around the back of the helmet from visor edge to visor edge. It recalls a goggle strap, a subtle homage to the early 1900s when the Isle of Man TT was founded and the racers still used goggles. Another recurring motif is the triskele. This three-legged emblem appears on both the flag and the coat of arms of the Isle of Man. It's a 13th century symbol of resilience, often associated with the national motto, quo cunque stabit, or whichever way you throw it, it will stand. 
obviously that has meaning for motorcyclists. A constant contact patch is our main goal. Whichever race courses conditions you throw at us, we stand rubber side down. The third component of this graphic is a map. Obviously, this traces the Snaefell mountain course, but what's interesting is that it isn't accurate. Instead, this is a stylized course map, which you can find painted on an old billboard on the Isle of Man itself. That's a tribute only the geekiest TT fans will catch. As for the helmet itself, I'm a bit torn. The base qualifier is one of my favorite sport buckets because it's dirt cheap, it's lightweight, it's comfortable, and since most spider monkeys wear earplugs, I don't even care that it's louder than a hydrogen bomb. But the DLX version costs twice the price. And for that, I just get a transition face shield and a compatibility port for a few out of date comm systems. Now this next helmet is a proof of concept. If you follow racing, most manufacturers do tribute helmets, if not full on race replicas for their sponsored riders. I chose the Arai Corsair X Vinales because I'm a big Maverick fan. This is a tribute design. It has Maverick's name and number above each side pod, and the base graphic is similar to the one that he most often uses. If it were a full on race replica, it would also have branding for Red Bull, for Oakley, for Yamaha, I'm not a big fan of advertising though, so I'm glad Arai left the sponsors off. The only brand that did make the cut is Ufa Designs, written in small letters at either end of the chin bar and underneath this spoiler wing at the back. That's one name I don't mind having written on my helmet. Ufa Designs has done graphics for Vinales, obviously, but also some F1 buckets for Kimi Raikkonen, Jensen Button. The name adds some racing pedigree. My one complaint with this helmet is that some idiot put the DOT sticker right over top of the rearmost and largest Maverick graphic. I doubt that would be the same on every helmet since there's room to sit the sticker lower. Probably I just got unlucky here. Helmet wise, the Corsair X is one of the nicest things you can put on your head. It looks tiny and slim from the outside. Indeed, it is quite a squeeze to put on, but once you do, it feels spacious and luxurious and precise from the inside. Arai's big thing is glancing blows. These cowls are designed to snap off. The side pods are sunk flush with the shell. And they built a moving pivot point for this visor, just so the mechanism could sit lower down and allow more of this upper shell to be perfectly round. Everything about the Corsair X is made to glance and slide, making it one of the safest racing buckets out there. Too bad most of us don't have $1,000 to drop. Now I'm going to end this list where it should have begun. This is the Bell Star RSD, and it's the most beautiful motorcycle thing. Subtly stunning, basic colors like red, gold, and black are diluted into burgundies, bronzes, and grays. They flow together with the inky underlying resins and stripe parallel to the checkerboard fiberglass. This graphic both respects and enhances its underlying mechanical construction. Coming from the legendary custom builder Roland Sands, we shouldn't have expected anything less. I've encountered Mr. Sands before, most often in the cruiser and retro realm, so it's nice to see his hand tip towards the sport bike market here. Only problem, and the reason that this helmet ends rather than begins our video, is that the Bell Star was the wrong sport helmet to choose. It misses all of the important features that you'll find in its older brother, the Race Star, and yet it still manages to cost a baffling $550. As much as my eyes want to buy it, my head says no. And that's it for the best looking motorcycle helmets. Thanks for watching.